Okay, welcome. Uh, welcome to the first thematic workshop in our fall series for the Ohio Collection Analysis Initiative. This is reading, interpreting, and reflecting upon list analysis reports. I'm Jake Stone. I'm the project coordinator for this initiative, and I'm your go-to person for any questions with technical support or um, getting started or, or kind of anywhere, wherever you are in this process, you can look to me for help. Aaron Kelsey is usually my co-host and our primary contact at the State Library, um, but she had something come up today, so she's not going to be able to make it, um, but she's, she's with us in spirit, I know. So welcome to the Ohio Collection and Analysis Initiative. I won't read this um, to you since, since I know you can all read this, um, but it's just a brief um, paragraph that sort of explains what this is about and what we're hoping to do here. Um, what we're hoping these workshops will provide for you all here today or accessing the video later um, on YouTube is that we have multiple entry points so that wherever you are in the school year, in your work year, um, you have these resources available to jump in whenever you have the space to, because that's what this is about. Um, we wanna make sure that people have ongoing access to these materials and resources whenever they're ready uh, or have the space and time to dive in. So today's session, uh, we're gonna be doing a brief overview of the initiative, just a really quick crash course for anyone who's uh, joining us for the first time today or maybe needs a little refresher. Then we're going to explore and discuss a sample list. Um, then we'll begin with importing and uploading our titles and looking at the list analysis report, reading, interpreting, and reflecting it upon it. Um, and then together with this, with this group of people today, we're gonna to be collectively adding and weeding titles um, to and from that collection based on whatever y'all think um, the collection might need. And that's sort of where I'm hoping uh, we can get some sort of part group participation and, and really put our heads together for making something, uh, making something great. Then we will reflect on that collection and compare uh, our different iterations that we might have created. And then finally, I'll email this to you all afterwards and to anybody who's viewing this recording who might want a copy, um, you can email me at jake at teachingbooks.net, but I will send you an implementation plan for the collection that we built together. And that'll be a summary of all the titles that we decided to add in Weed. It'll be a copy of our comparison charts. It'll be, um, if we were to do a needs assessment, which we're not gonna do today, that will be included there as well. Um, it's just a really sort of consolidated, collated document that summarizes and inventories all of your choices. I will also be sending out a custom um, certificate of completion to anyone who would like it for attending the session today. So you can say, hey, I was here at the inaugural thematic workshop uh, in, in fall 2022. So here's the beginning of our, our brief crash course and I'll go through this um, pretty ex expediently, but anyone here, please feel free to stop me if you have any questions. Uh, in this process, the first thing that you'll do, the very first thing is you'll start by picking a collection small or large. This tool that we're using has the ability to analyze up to 10,000 titles at a time, but we found that it's really helpful, um, especially when you're starting out, if you begin with smaller collections, focused groups like, you know, a seasonal display, um, your Thanksgiving titles, your holiday titles, um, Martin Luther King Day display, a summer reading list, um, any, anything that has a specific purpose that serves your community or your classroom or your, your library um, in a certain way. So once you have that collection, you can scan or import your titles into the analysis tools, which we'll show you. This is one of the ways you can do it. Um, what we're gonna be doing today is working with a spreadsheet, a CSV file, but one way you can import your titles is by importing ISBNs. And you can do that directly, even with a barcode scanner or your phone right into the website. Now here is the real core of what we're gonna be working on together today in this session. Um, reflecting on your findings and viewing your list analysis report to identify the next steps that you'll take with this collection. So here's an example of some of the summary data, the type of summary data we're gonna be looking at today and working with. Um, as you can see, there's the you know, helpful visuals like your balance of fiction and nonfiction, balance of reading levels, um, diverse books, genres represented, cultural experience areas represented, great summary data like that. And you'll also see uh, things like this, what might not be included. So cultural experience areas that aren't currently 
emphasized or present in your collection, genres that aren't included, just different ways of looking at what you do have and what you don't have so that you can make informed decisions about what's best for your community. And again, uh, throughout this work, we're not gonna be prescribing any of that onto you. We're, we are just looking to empower you with tools that can help you um, make your own decisions. We don't know what your community needs are and um, it's not our job to tell you. So what you'll receive through this project is tools, including a step-by-step -step interactive handbook. Um, I'll show you where that lives in a second. And then full-time technical and personal support via phone, email, Zoom, office hours. We hold office hours um, about twice a month uh, with me and Aaron there. And you can reach us at any time for other questions. So in time, you will have at the end of this confidence using these tools that the State Library has freely provided to all of you and to everybody in the state of Ohio. Um, action plans, the implementation plan we talked about, to augment any collection you choose. And then an evolving community of colleagues statewide who are learning and working all together on similar collection processes. So this is um, the last part of this quick crash course is what this project really looks like. Uh, and this is your homepage for all the materials. If you go over here, I'm on teaching books right now, but if you are with a public library, you'll be using book connections. So you'll see this screen. Um, I will be sending, and when you uh, so fill out the form to register, I will send you an email with access instructions. It takes you to this page and you'll be able to sign in with your credentials. So I will do that right now. And then every time you log in, you'll see this homepage, which is really handy. It's got a ton of really pertinent information on it, including the handbook that we talked about briefly just now, um, all on the side here, as well as on the main body. Your link to view and review your collection analysis reports, and then additional materials like your quick start guide, um, collection considerations, which is a really lovely document of reflection questions and prompts. Um, put forth by librarians and collection management specialists on our own team that sort of just help you think about the sort of things that might guide your thinking um, when you are adding and reading titles. And then sample files to work with just to make sure that you have a, an understanding of the tool. So that's the homepage. Uh, and that brings our crash course section um, to an end. Anyone have any general questions before we move on to a little bit about what we're going to be doing together today. Cool. Well, I'll pay attention to the chat. Like I said, um, typically for these sessions, I'll be here as well as Aaron. And so one of us will always be looking at the chat, but I'll keep it open here as I'm walking through this uh, in case anyone has any questions they want to ask. Okay, so today we're gonna to be working with this older readers sample. Um, this list on top is what we're gonna be starting with and, and building our list um, with. But I just wanna show you really briefly the way that you can use this tool to compare. Um, so this is, these two halves of a list were taken from one full list. Aaron and I uh, built a list that had both younger reader titles and older reader titles. And then we use the tool to split them in half. Uh, and what we found with this particular collection is that the balance of fiction and nonfiction was pretty much split between these two halves. So for the older reader sample, it's heavily nonfiction. Um, for the younger readers, it's heavily fiction. And then we also noticed the publication year median for these collections was 2013, so not very recent. Um, that might be one of the things that we look to uh, solve for when we are building a list together. You can also see the metrics for diverse books up here, graphic novels, um, award winners. That's all also highlighted here. You know, always something that you might want to look for to help narrow your choices down when you're adding um, adding books and adding titles. So we'll do this together, like I said. But um, when we're talking about weeding titles, you might choose to weed titles. It's a part of the process if you want it to be. Um, it's not mandatory, just like adding titles isn't mandatory, but for this collection, you know, we might think about removing some biographies, some nonfiction, 
Maybe we might remove some of the younger titles um, that don't belong in our older readers sample. And then since the publication year median was 2013, we might want to investigate any titles that were published a long time ago to see, you know, why is it 2013 instead of something more like 2020? Um, are those books, are those titles worthwhile in our collection, knowing that they're not so recent? And then for adding titles, um, what kinds of titles can we add to make this collection even better? Uh, we might think about adding some more fiction titles to strike a better balance of fiction and nonfiction. We could focus on some of the cultural experience areas that were not included in this sample, and we'll look for titles published in the last few years. So that's where we're going to move over to teaching books um, and work with our lists for today. So I'm going to head to this collection analysis reports page. And again, back on the home page, you can reach that here through the left sidebar right here on the home page. Also, when you're signed in, you see these little um, lines in the top left. If you click those, it pulls up your reading lists. And then once you've created a list analysis report, um, you'll have a little tab here called your collection analysis reports. So there are a bunch of places you can find this link. So here we are, and we're gonna start by uploading our spreadsheet. So if I go to my desktop for a sec, I can show you, can you see my desktop? This older reader sample CSV. So here's the list we're gonna be working in today. Um, and as a reminder for anyone who, um, who hasn't done this yet, uh, in order to upload a CSV spreadsheet to the collection analysis tool, you need three columns with distinct information in it. The first one is title. The second is author. And then the third is ISBN if you have them. Um, this is the information that we need in order to match your titles. So yeah, this just gives it the best shot. Um, so here is the older reader sample that we're going to be working with today. Everything okay. from Jin Yang to uh, Howard Zinn. Okay, so we've got that set up. Now we'll go back to our analysis reports page. And then here under import titles for report, we're gonna click upload a CSV file. And that brings us to this screen. So we're gonna be creating a new report. If you had a report already created and you wanted to add titles into it, this import where field is where you could do that. So when we are adding new titles later today, um, we will select the list that we're gonna build right now. So let's call this um, thematic workshop crowdsourced list. And this is gonna be a classroom library collection. So we will pick our CSV file and import it. Okay, we have our list analysis report for the day. So this is what we're gonna be working on today. Um, can everyone see this well enough? Mm -hmm. Cool, okay. Okay, so you can see this sample data. Um, and I think what I'll do for right now is just kind of walk you through the different sections. Um, and then together we can talk about some areas we, we might want to focus in and ideas we have for how we can build this. And I've got some suggestions if uh, people want them, but sort of we'll see where, where this goes. Um, so on the top here, very important, you have your link to download the spreadsheet. This is where all the weeding would happen if we were going to be weeding titles from this collection. Um, you also have a lot more details there that um, are all grouped together. So you can see the, the, the year published next to the experience area, next to the award winning uh, number of awards. We'll look at that later. So at the top, we have our at a glance summary data. So we can see in this collection of 37 titles, we have 11 genres represented, 12 cultural experience areas represented. Um, the balance of fiction and nonfiction is about three quarters nonfiction. And then just over half of our collection is diverse. So pretty good. Um, depending on what our goals were, might be for this collection, we might want that to be in 80 or 
something else. Um, it's really, you know, it's up to you with every single collection. But for this one today, let's let's shoot for um, let's shoot for eighty. And then this award winners, we already looked at this. How you can see your publication, your median, your average reading level. So this first section shows you the balance of fiction and nonfiction. And if you click on any of these um, little segments of your collection, like what are these two books for grades 11 and 12? It'll open up in a new tab and you'll see that it's Witches and 10 Days of Mad Women. So these are the two books in our collection that we think are for the oldest, um, oldest segment of our community. You can do the same thing if you wanted to see, you know, what are these 28 nonfiction books? And we see, okay, it's Courage, Courage Has No Color, um, Vincent and Theo, Diary of a Young Girl. Now we'll look at this a little bit uh, harder later when we're adding new titles, but here's our recency graph. So you can see we have books from 1839 up to 2020. So the most recent books in this collection are, this book is Anti-Racist and The Invincible Summer of Juniper Jones. And the oldest book is The Fall of the House of Usher. So we have everything from Poe to anti-racism in this collection. Uh, and that's another thing you can look at when you're weeding and adding is, you know, maybe we want to narrow the focus a little bit more. Um, maybe for a classroom library, it's, it's great to have those two titles in the same collection. But for a more focused um, or direct collection that serves a specific purpose, maybe we wouldn't want to have both of those books here. Uh, it's, it's all up to you. Then we've got this bar graph for cultural experience details. So you can see here, um, I believe 57% of the books in this collection. Yeah, 57% are diverse. But of that 57%, 27% are African-American titles. So that's the, the vast majority of our diverse books are African-American titles. Then we have you know a, a good balance of one book per uh, for a lot of the other ones three books with the Asian cultural experience area and then five for women and girls. Um, and there is overlap. So if you were going to be reading, if, if let's say um, I Am Law was in this collection, that would probably show up in women and girls and Middle Eastern. Um, now the genre details, you can see, remember this collection was pretty heavily skewed towards nonfiction. And there's a ton of biographies here, a ton of nonfiction, a little bit of historical fiction. Whoever put this collection together definitely like history. Um, so we might, you know, balance that out a little bit. And then same thing for the curricular area details, uh, social studies, history, English language arts. This, this area tends to be like the most popular um, in people's collections. It's a lot of, you know, Contemporary books or, or young adult novels, middle grade novels tend to fall into this category. Um, and then really notably, this is our not included section. So in this collection of older reader sample titles, uh, we don't have anything about um, disability and we don't have any humor, um, humor titles. We don't have any mystery titles. So these are more things we can think about um, when we're diving in to really build and augment this list which we can start doing now. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly showcase the weaning process a little bit because we haven't gotten into that much in a while. Um, so I will open the spreadsheet up and we can look at it together. So again, to, to weed, you're gonna wanna open this download spreadsheet link right here. And here's the Excel version of this list. Um, it is small. So I don't know if any of you have looked at these spreadsheets yet. Um, if you've done most of your work on teaching books or book, book connections directly, or if you've looked at these spreadsheets. Um, but there's a lot of great stuff in here beyond your title and author and ISBN fields. You have the, the time that you added it. So this comes into play a lot when we're going to be adding new titles. Uh, so you can see, you can sort by, you know, when you did the augmentation work, maybe you liked a lot of the titles that you added in 
um, last Tuesday and you want to go back to that version, you could just delete everything after that. Um, here's the link to visit any of these books on teaching books. And then genres, curricular area, areas, um, cultural experience areas. So right off the bat, you know, if we wanted to sort this spreadsheet and look only at um, what did have a cultural experience area. So what's a diverse title in this collection? We could go to this sort button up here and sort it A to C. So that brings all of our diverse titles to the forefront, our 22 of 37 titles. So now we can look back at all these titles and bold them just for clarity and say, you know, these, these are the titles that our um, tool on teaching books did not say were diverse. So pretty interesting that this, this book is anti-racist, um, wasn't marked as diverse. Said we had 21 diverse books and that's, yeah, that's, that's reflected. So um, this, is, this is a great example of something that, you know, this tool is a work in progress. And if you wanted to submit um, questions about anything like this, you can reach me at any time. So you might say, hey, Jake, you know, why is this book is anti-racist, not, uh, not a diverse title? It doesn't feel right. Um, and we can, we can fix that. So I might fix that. Here are all of our books that are not diverse. And then we can go even further and say, you know, which books didn't win award winners, uh, didn't win awards if we wanted to weed those. So we could start here again. And what I'm doing right now is the first thing I'm sorting by is this cultural experience area so that we have everything at the bottom. Then I'm gonna add another one that sorts by award winners. So now I can see these books are not diverse and did not win any awards. Um, either in, in this one as well. Oops. So these aren't, you know, these aren't necessarily books that we know we want to read. Like a young people's history of the United States is a good thing to have in a collection. Um, the you know, Parkland speaks, depending on what your collection is for, that could be a really positive um, title in, in your library. So just because something isn't diverse and doesn't have awards next to the name, doesn't mean it's worthless at all in a collection. Um, but this is, it does give you some different ways of looking at the tool, um, looking at your library. So beyond that, you can see the publication year. So let's, let's take this a step further and say, I wanna see all the titles that oops, um, are not diverse, have, very few awards and oops, uh, and were written a long time ago. So these books now, so yeah, we've got two books from, let's see, 1839 to 2009. Let's look at these books. So the fall of the House of Usher, A Night to Remember, Young People's History of the United States, Chasing Lincoln's Killer, and The Duel um, by Hamilton Burr. These four books, five books, sorry, were written prior to 2009, did not win any awards, and are not marked as diverse books. Um, so this is kind of where we would start with the weeding process. Um, and to weed titles, which we can do in a second if you guys want to, is we have this um, weed column here. And you can put anything in this weed column. Like you can say, yes, I want to weed this. Or you can just do an X. Um, and if the collection analysis tool sees something in that column, then it'll take it out of your collection. And what that means is just that it won't be reflected. Um, this, this book won't be reflected in your collection data in your list analysis report. It's not going to delete it from the spreadsheet and it definitely won't delete it from your library. Um, it doesn't go anywhere because we want you to be able to track and see what you've decided to take out. But it just kind of removes it from the uh, from the metrics. So here are our books that we've sorted. 
Does anybody have a title that they'd like to nominate to be weeded? And I'll keep the chat open too. Why don't we do the duel? Okay, we're gonna weed the duel because people know about Hamilton at this point. You know, everyone everyone's heard the soundtrack. We don't need this dragging yeah. our metrics down. Um, okay, great. So we're gonna weed that. And like I said, I put X here, but I'll also just put like, you know, weed. Any other books um, we wanna take out? I I don't want Edgar Allan Poe in there. I said it. I don't want because that book is really old, and I want to see our publication year median go way up. Is there anything else? this one out too. I don't want Isaac Newton here. I don't like science. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. Um, okay, so these are our books that we've decided to weed. So to take these out of your list analysis report, you're going to have to re-upload the spreadsheet back to teaching books. Um, so we'll save this as a CSV, super important. And we're going to call this crowdsourced list weeded. Uh, and I always lose this, so I want to make sure that I put it on my desktop where I can access it very easily. Because all the time, I will save it in some obscure file folder that my computer suggests to me, and then I can't find it, and it's gone forever. So back on this page, we're going to re-upload this weeded list. So we're back to the upload a CSV file. Now we'll call this, what did we call the last one? Um, thematic workshop. Thematic workshop, crowdsourced list. And we'll say this has been weeded. And again, this was a classroom library collection. So we're going to pick crowdsourced list weeded. I also um, always check the date modified when I'm doing this because when you're working with a ton of different spreadsheets, you want to make sure you got the one that you've worked on most recently. Um, and a lot of the time I will look for way too long to try to find the right list. And that's a really easy way to do it. Okay, so now we've got these 34 titles. Um, we've weeded three. And you get this little thing on the top here that says, please note, this report provides information for 34 titles data for any unmatched, duplicate, or weeded titles have been excluded from the report. So now we're at 34, and let's see. I don't see the publication year median changing that much. It looks like we went up in diversity. We went up to 62%. Um, nothing changed here with the fiction and nonfiction balance. And I think we went up a little bit with award winners uh, percentages. To see that really clearly, we can plug these into the comparison tool. And this is something that we'll look at again a little bit later when we are adding titles. Um, so if I wanna compare our original list that we started with to our weeded list where we took out three titles, I can see really clearly what changed. And since we only took out three books, not a ton is gonna change. Um, like all of these top three areas are the same because you know when you're working with a list of about 40 books and you take out three, but there is impact. Um, uh, interesting. These no longer add up to 100, which is something I'm going to look at, because they should. Um, 
This one was weird. Okay. Yeah, it looks like pretty much every everything pretty much stayed the same. Which actually surprises me. It looks like our award winners went down, huh? Hmm. I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a closer look at this after the after the session today because that seems a little fishy to me. But anyway, um, here we are with this weeded list. When when you say you'll you'll take a look at it, what will you look at? Like what could tell you the answers to those questions that you just had? I have a feeling that this is a programming issue. Um, I, th I think that there's something in our system that when we weed titles, maybe isn't reflecting that data correctly in these comparison metrics. Gotcha. So that's what I'm gonna investigate. And the other, yeah, cause I mean, it, what I'm seeing right now, this is our, this is our weeded list here on the left. And this is our weighted list here. And the at a glance stuff, like this says eight and 26, 24%, 76%. So that didn't change at all, which struck me as odd. And then here it's 22% and 70%. Right. So we're missing 8% of the collection now. And yeah, I'm, I, I, something, something seems off. Um, but that's okay. You know, we're, we're a work in progress. So. <laughs> This is why we do things like this, because it, it pulls little things out um, to look at. Yeah, it looks like there's a, something going on with the data. It says 23 award winners, 62%. Very interesting. Huh, okay. Well, that's a project for me for this afternoon. <laughs> um, okay, so back on this list, any other questions about weeding? I know the, the comparison was a little scuffed there at the end, but um, generally about how weeding looks and, and how that process goes, any, any questions? No. Cool. Um, okay, so let's add some titles. So there are a ton of places we could start. Um, I'll list a couple and we can kind of decide together. We could start by just looking at fiction books we could start by looking at more recent titles um, by some of the cultural experience areas or genres that are not included, um, or maybe some of the ones that are included but are just kind of underrepresented. Um, like we could look at any of these with just one book and, and go from there. Any sort of initial thoughts on where we might wanna start? I don't know. <laughs> That's cool. That's, that is all good. What if we start at um, like in the cultural experiences, the men and boys? Cool, great. Um, okay, so there's this really handy tool right here. There are a ton of different ways to look for new titles on teaching books, but this is the one I like to showcase because it's right here in the report. Um, so first off, we know we're in an older grade level collection. Mm -hmm. so. We can start with this fourth to 12th um, bucket. And then here in cultural experience areas, you said men and boys. So we'll select this. And when we hit search here, this is gonna pull up. Oh, any um, any genres we wanna look at? Or just kind of generally every? Yeah, I would think probably everything right now, unless we cool. focus, I mean, a lot of it seemed historical. Mm -hmm. we are, if we wanna stay with that or not. Yeah, and that's that's maybe this is supposed to be a history collection, and that's why you know with these, when when we, I don't want to work with like. Well, I, I try to present sort of vague sa samples so we can kind of decide how to identify a collection, but it's in some ways harder when you're working with the sample list because mm -hmm. we don't know that this is like a history collection. Right. Um, so if it were a history collection, then we're in great shape. But yeah, if we wanted to find just some fiction men and boys titles that, that are underrepresented then. Um, yeah, and any of these genres you wanna focus on or just the, the whole collection? Um, probably not, because we didn't really look at genres before when we were looking at the, the list. Mm -hmm. um, it did though seem like quite a 
bit of it was nonfiction. I'm just, but that's my like hold up right now is like yeah. should we focus on, I mean, I don't see historical fiction listed there as a genre, um, but under curricular, I don't know if, or will curricular only look at nonfiction? I think, I think if we clicked English language arts, this might isolate a lot of fiction. Um, okay. So we can try that. Okay. So when we hit search in the new tab, we get a hundred books for an older grade level in this English language arts curricular area that pertain to men and boys and that are not in our current collection. Um, we know they're not in our current collection because they're men and boys um, and that's not there. So here's our hundred books. Um, we can use these filters on the side to go even, even more narrow. Um, so we wanna look at your published or awards, anything like that? Yeah, let, why don't we look at, first, can we look at which one is from the current year? Yeah, totally. Hazard, Francis O'Rourke Dowell. Got it. Yeah, and then you can do a lot more digging. In. So if you, you know, if you want to read about what this is, what this is about, if you're unfamiliar with the title, Teaching Books has a ton of resources. Um, wow. So this is the description directly from the publisher, but yeah. for this title, it looks like we've got seven original resources. Um, we have a meet the author recording with the with the author. Looks like they appeared on our blog at one point. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you can sort of discern for yourself once you use the filters and pull up yeah. um, what these books are if they're right for your collection. So this is the one from 2022. Um, anything else you want to see here? Probably not in the years, but maybe um, awards and distinctions. Cool. So yeah, on this list we have all of the all of the various awards that these hundred books have won, um, and you can see the ones that are just, that are recent award winners or just any award, um, or if you had a particular award in, in mind that you wanted to focus on. Like there are a bunch in this junior library guild right. um, area. Anything jumping out to you? A place to go. Um, why don't we um, do any award and let's cool. just, how many it cuts out? Yeah, so that cut out 56, wow. so we're down to 44. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's great that you can do this and you can stack the, you can stack the filters. So like if I wanted to look at awards and past three years, now we're down to 23. Oh, good. Okay. So that's the ones that just fit this area. Um, yeah, so, and it looks like a lot of these are probably going to be fiction. Yeah, it looks like it. Mm -hmm. And you see, like, there's a mix, too. Like, there's obviously a lot of um, African-American male mm -hmm. titles here, but yeah. also, like, Gary Paulson and... The unpopular vote, fish out of water. Um, there, yeah, there's a there's a wide range of titles here. So, how do we feel about these twenty three books? Do we want to add them? Do we want to go even more narrow? Can you pick and choose which ones you add? Oh, I see. Yeah, there's a plan. yeah, yeah. So you can do it individually if you wanted to say, you know, I only want to add Felix ever after. Then you could press this button, but. You can add them bulk at a time here. Um, so cool. we can click this button to get all 23, but you can also pick. Got it. So I definitely want to get these three, these four. Okay. Any others that you might want to highlight? Um, let's do um, how to train your dad. Cool. Okay, so we've got these five books. Mm -hmm. And now what we're going to do is create a custom reading list. Um, so to add titles to your list analysis report, you got to create these smaller focus lists. 
Um, and these custom reading lists can hold up to 200 titles. So you can add a bunch of different custom reading lists to a list analysis report, um, or you can just pile them all in one. So we're gonna create a new list and call this one men and boys for 10, 11 year old child. And actually, um, maybe I won't call it men and boys because we wanna add some more titles to this. So we'll just call this new titles for a penalty workshop. Okay. Great. And so now what we can do is we can edit this list or view it. Um, I'm going to click view, but I'll, I'll show you what both look like. If you were to edit the list, oh. then you could import some more titles here. So, you know, if you if you thought this was great, but I just want to import, and I don't know why you would do this, but this is always kind of what comes to mind for me. Um, everything for shark wars <laughs> series. Like you can do that in, or you could do the Buckeye Awards, which is a much better example than the shark wars series. Uh, <laughs> you could do the teen Buckeye Awards grade nine through 12 or from, you know, from any year, or you can paste titles directly in. So if I wanted to do, you know, um, uh, Wonder, RJ Palacio, I could do that here and now I put it into the list. But we feel like we want to add these right now, um, these five titles, just to see how it changes our report. So if we click this button to the left, add to list analysis report, mm -hmm. it pulls up this box and we can select what list we want to add to. So here we've got our two lists from today. We have our crowdsource list that we started with and then the list that we weeded three titles from, five, four titles from. Um, I would be tempted to put these in the weeded list because we've already done some work on this and we can kind of see what the impact of weeding and adding looks like. But if you wanted to say, forget about the weeding, um, I just want to go back to what we started with, you could, you could go from here. So let's do weeded. And when you import them, it pulls up this version two list. Oh, okay. So you can now look at this title and say, this is where we started. Then we weeded it. And then this is the second version of this list. So I know that we've added some titles. Um, and if you scroll down, you can see we're up to where we've bumped the genres, we've bumped the cultural experience areas, definitely bumped diversity. Um, we added some fiction. It's a little bit more balanced now. The publication year jumped up two years just from those five books. And then if we go to the fiction books, we'll see, hey, here are some of the books we added. How to Train Your Dad, it's here. We we brought it in. And then you can get you know more validation and affirmation um, by sliding down. And Men and Boys is no longer included here. As are some of the other ones. I didn't. I didn't quite catch which they were, but it looks like we caught a few cultural experience areas um, by by importing those titles. And then, if you scroll up to cultural experience areas, men and boys is now the third most popular um, area in this collection. So that that's an impactful five books that we just added. Um. So we could either continue, we could continue adding books here um, and kind of see how this changes with more, with more iterations, or we could look at the comparison report and decide that we've done enough. Um, do you have a, an instinct here? Um, I always want to add more. <laughs> Great, um, let's do it. <laughs> I, I wonder, do you, so we've added it kind of, you know, like adding actually means purchasing and everything. Are there right. links to being able to purchase those books like on just different vendors or Amazon or anything? I don't think so. Uh, we, we aren't connected with any um, vendors right now. Yeah. Partially because we don't want anyone to feel like we're like selling them books by subscribing to this free service, but also... Um, just because we don't have them. I think, so Teaching Books was acquired by Overdrive last fall. Um, so we are in the process of merging 
together uh, with their resources. So I think maybe at some point in the future, there might be links to Sora and Libby Got it. on this list, um, but not right now. Got it. Yeah, but we do make it easy and, and I'll show you this at the end. We have this DEI implementation plan Okay. and that really isolates for you the, the titles that you added. So you have a purchase list. Oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what's next? Um, well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think about what was already on the list mm -hmm. so that we can stick with, you know, kind of that collection. Um, there's a lot, of, so maybe we should add some more fiction. Um, since there, it is so heavy in nonfiction right now. Mm -hmm. um, is the way to add fiction then through the genres or is there a way to, for it to, you know, just look at all of the genres and look at fiction? Oh, that would be too big. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's a great question. And that's actually something I don't have the answer to right now because I don't think we have a filter for fiction and nonfiction. Um, that might be because it's just way too many titles, but maybe it's something we could add. Um, so I've been using this English language arts area as a fiction okay. stand-in, mm -hmm. um, but we can also look, you know, it'll pull up a ton of titles and, and we can- you're right. I see it now. Okay. Yeah. And you can get really specific here too. You know, like if you want to look at, um, you know, disability and holiday, I don't know what those books are, but we right. can find out. Yeah. You know, or we can say in Spanish. I don't know if I have no idea if a book is going to come up here, but you can kind of get, nope. Okay. Yeah. So that that book doesn't exist in the teaching books universe. <laughs> um, but if we left this out and we went up to English language arts or just took it out entirely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got three huh. holiday disability titles. Um, so yeah, I mean, there you can get really adventurous and experimental with it, you know? Like one of the things I love about this tool is that you can just play around, you know, like you can mix criteria, you can add a ton of different titles in and see what it does to your collection. And mm -hmm. then you can close the window like you never did it. And no shelves have been upended and all of your books are still intact, but you, you had a fun experiment. Yeah. Um, so I might, let's see. I might, since we only have one humor book here and we don't have any disability titles, that might be where I go next. Okay. Um, just Cause you know, those are good books to have. If you click like disability and humor, is mm -hmm. it gonna look for all, like, it's not gonna look just for funny books with characters with disabilities, is it? It is. Gotcha. It so is. if I wanted humor mm -hmm. and I wanted disability, I would want to do those as separate searches. Yeah, yeah, okay. right. So, like, what's what are these books? They're sixty-four. So you know, El Defo. Mm -hmm. um, but if we, I think, yeah, you can't clear them up here really. But you could just go back to this list and say just disability books. So, adding humor brings it from a hundred, a thousand and ninety-two total disability titles to 64. Um, so it's like, it's a, you know, if you know what you're looking for, it's a helpful thing to do because it makes it easier, mm -hmm. but you can definitely start here. Or, uh, I mean, I haven't, let's, how many humor titles do you think there are on teaching books from fourth to 12th grade? <laughs> no. There are, okay, no, I was, I was expecting like 9,000. There are 3,300. And El Defo is at the top of all of them. Um, so yeah, of those options, where where do you where do you want to go? I don't. I, I'm curious though. Like back to that humor list. 
the fact that Harry Potter shows up as the humor. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's granted, interesting. There's probably funny parts of all books, but I would uh -huh. not think it was like, you know, in the same category as a Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, that that is interesting. <laughs> that is interesting that it's humor before science fiction. And yeah, it looks like they're all here. Yeah. That is a, yeah, that's a great question. Sure. And these are the sort of things like you can write to us and ask. Um, Why in the world? Yeah, you, you could you could say, because what, what we love about teaching books is that we don't use any publisher metadata. Um, we avoid that entirely because it can be inaccurate and confusing. Um, and so all of these classifications come from our own team um, of librarians and collection management specialists. And there's this definitions link on a lot of pages mm -hmm. that brings you to how we define these classifications. Right, right. So like here's genre and here's humor. That's a fair definition for humor. Yeah. I guess it applies to Harry Potter. Um, yeah. Riddles, certainly. But, you know, I, yeah. I, I, I agree. It's a little surprising um, that that's where it, it starts with Harry Potter. Got it. Yeah. Great question. Um, so yeah, we're, back to adding titles to this list. Where where do you want to go? This is this is your uh, list. So, we can you scan back through like the cultural experiences again? Mm -hmm. You want to see what's not included or the balance of what is included? No, this is good. Um, yeah. What if you if you do um, Muslim? Mm -hmm. um, oh, sorry. Did you want to keep? No, looking? no, no, no. You go ahead. That's good. Cool. So, any any genre or curricular area, or just want to stick with older? Muslim yeah, just people? older. I don't know. Let's see what. Let's see what. How many we get, and then maybe. We right. Can... Yeah, it's a that's a it's a great tactic. So we got 221. And again, we can use these on the side. Um, oh, that's true. To filter by, you can do genre, like, and, and it'll even show you. So you don't have to do the guess and check game. Like if you click this, it's gonna bring up 29. Um, huh. But we can do awards. You can also see um, the titles here that are stacking. So oh. there are two titles that are both disability and Muslim. And nine that are Jewish and Muslim, seven LGBTQ, you know, so yeah. on and so forth. What if you do um, the, like in the, the published in the past mm -hmm. three? Past three, okay, so now we've got 83. Hmm. And then, yeah, these, these again have changed. Um, so now we still have these two titles. Looks like a lot of these overlapping titles were actually um, recent. So that's that's cool to see. Yeah. Any more um, narrowing you want to do, or just go from here? Wow! Can you click on biography? There's mm -hmm. two of them are biographies. That's really interesting. It's actually not okay. I was wrong. Um, <laughs> looks like these don't these don't oh, readjust okay. once. <laughs> There's sixteen. I was gonna say wow. Yeah. So that yeah, I think I actually think that's something I've asked about before. And for whatever reason, the, the code is really difficult to make it reorient every Got time it. you yeah. stack the um, criteria. Yeah. Okay. Maybe one day. I hope so. Yeah, it's a lot to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so, anything else come to mind you want to do to narrow down or? We start adding some of these titles. Yeah, let's start adding some of these. Great. Oh, you know what? Could you um, actually go to the award area? Mm -hmm. like awards sure thing. Award. Any award or a specific one? Why don't we go with any award right now? And cool. 45. 45, OK. Hmm. 
I mean, we definitely have to look at them to choose, but what if we just randomly choose um, other words from home to cool. add that one? Got it. Um, I don't know many of these other titles. Um, how about um, The Candle and the Flame? Baraka Beats, right there by your arrow. <laughs> um, how about who the F are you? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that also falls into the humor category. I'm guessing. Yeah. Interesting. Magnificent Miss Marvel, volume three. Huh. Maybe I that. I wonder if it's. Oh, there's two more. Yeah. So is it the superhero or is it? Let's let's find out. Um, do we do we like these ones? Do we want to add any other ones or? No, let's just add those. Okay, cool. Okay. So oh, we'll go back. Book. We'll add this to our list, and we have this list already built, so we can just put it in, add to list. Um, and then yeah, we can edit or view. But I am curious about what you were saying. Um, magnificent Mrs. Is. Marvel. Miss Marvel, based on the TV show. Yeah, so it, it seems like she's a Muslim protagonist. Yeah. Yeah, from. Yeah, so we get in this one, we get graphic novel, science fiction, fantasy, women and girls, and Muslim. So, Got it. very intersectional. Yeah, right. Um, we're building that reading list, so we don't have to re-import it every single time we do that. We can do another um, another area. Does is there something that comes to mind, or, or do you want to import those right in? I don't. Um, nothing else comes to mind. Cool. I'm gonna add in a couple of my favorites on the disability list, just because I have a few that I that I like to just add into these lists. Yeah. Um, so I want. Only from this year. There's a lot. 49. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I only want to work with yours because that's, that's how I'm feeling today. Wow. There's only two. Only two. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, I think that's from this current year, right? Right. So if we bring it back out to the last three years, yeah, that I guess that, that might mean we just don't have some of the more recent lists. Um, or maybe a lot of the disability award lists haven't been announced yet. I'm not, not entirely sure. Um, but let's get a few of these. And one of the last Quintista. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, Universe. And yeah, you, you brought up a great um, point, which is that a lot of these titles maybe you won't know. Um, so doing this is, a, is another way of kind of exploring mm -hmm. more titles um, and doing that sort of curative, building building that curative habit. Okay, so we've got in this custom reading list, 18 books now. It's a pretty, a pretty good number um, of books to add to a collection of 34. That should have a, a pretty significant impact. Mm -hmm. And we know we've already added some of these books to our reading list, um, but it doesn't matter. We can just add them right in anyway and any of the duplicates won't count. Um, one of the great things that this tool does, whether they're your own titles coming from um, your collection management software or from teaching books, it, it says duplicates are fine. Um, so you don't have to painstakingly go through your lists and delete the titles, which is a big, big help, I hope. So we want to go into this version two list because now we want a version three. Um, and we'd, we'd actually, we would get version three if we imported right into this, um, we don't need to go into the most recent one, but since we have the books um, that we've already added to version two here, we'll, let's do it again. So we've got 52 titles now. And the diverse books metric has shot up to 72, 75. Um, our publication year median is up to 2016 now. We started from 2013. 
-hmm. And our fiction and nonfiction balance is way more even. Yeah. And we did that without really taking away many nonfiction books. We only weeded, I can't remember, we weeded three. Um, so without taking away more than three titles, we, we totally shifted the, um, the balance of fiction and nonfiction here. And you can um, see visually, this is a much more recent collection than what yeah. we started with. There's a lot more diversity even within your diverse titles. When we started, this was just you know one big bar with African American titles, and then a bunch of small ones here. But there's a lot more. Um, it's, it's a lot more well rounded now. And genre is always going to kind of be up and down. We're still doing a lot of biography and nonfiction, but there's a lot of other types of titles now around it um, to make it look a little bit more balanced. Same same with cult, curricular area. Right. And then not included. There's a, a lot less now that is not included. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's pretty great. Um, any other ad additions you want to make before we, or we can even go back and weed um, if you wanted to, but is any more work you want to do on this list? I just had a question because I saw, um, I, I don't know what list we were just looking at, but it, it said that, you know, the certain book had seven awards and 28 resources. Mm -hmm. what type of resources, what does that mean? Yeah, so that's a that's a great teaching books. Um, so let's, I don't know which book that was. But I don't either, but yeah, it's. Let's find something with a lot of resources. Okay. Um, that has to do, yeah, with, so what teaching books was as a, as a service, sort of before we added this cultural experience, um, sorry, this um, collection analysis aspect is the goal of teaching books is to bring readers closer to the titles. So if you are teaching a, a specific title or someone is in your community is reading the book, um, they can come to teaching books and click on original resources. I see. So you get a little bit closer. Um, so yeah, you've got author interviews and for more popular books where we've done our sort of our own um like, let me, let me go to the first one that comes to mind is, here's a new book that I know has a teaching book specific resource. So we did a, um, a blog post with this author recently, and she told us about her process writing this, this book and sort of the story behind it. Um, so these are the resources that we collect here on teaching books and try to make accessible to everybody. I see. Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question? Oh, absolutely. Very yeah, cool. thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, so back to this. Yeah, how, how are we feeling about this collection right now? Pretty good, I think. Pretty good. I agree. It's I love seeing this this visual, you know, like it was a lot more, it was a lot flatter before we started. Yeah. Um, so there are a lot of ways that you can reflect on, I'm sorry, I'm clicking all over the place. A lot of ways that you can reflect on the work that you've done. And what we're gonna get to is this DEI implementation plan. This is the last step in the process. Once you've gone through multiple iterations, if you want to, um, and here's this, this is how we see the process here. Um, from identifying a collection to gathering and importing into the tool, and then going through this kind of cycle that we just worked with. Um, reflecting on the list, questioning, do these results meet my community's needs? And then you kind of go through the cycle of refining the collection by adding and leading titles until you get to a point where you feel like, yes, um, I have done the work that I set out to do here with this list, and I'm ready to see the, the impact of that. Um, so that's this button, this generate imp implementation plan button. But another way to look at it is if you wanna just view the comparison report. So we can do up to four. Um, so starting with our original list and then the list that we weeded three titles to from, then this version two list that we weeded three titles from and then added five to. And then this one, we weeded three, we added five and then we added another 13. So we can compare 
the changes all across this process and see what we did sort of step by step. Um, so from left to right, it gets older. Uh, so on the right, here's where we started and here's where we ended up. Okay. So you can see we've got these, uh, these items weeded across collections. We went from 11 genres represented down to nine when we weeded and then up to 12. The top three genres are pretty untouched, except here at the end, when we added in a lot of the books, we brought realistic fiction up to number three. Okay. And when we look at the cultural experience areas, we started with 12, and then we added five. Um, so we only, we together, we only looked at two, um, men and boys and, and no, sorry, we did three, men and boys, disability and, and Muslim. Um, and now we see that men and boys is, is up there and as our Muslim titles, um, the balance of fiction and nonfiction has in, improved a lot. Again, I'm going to look at this because 44 plus 51 does not equal 100. Um, but the diverse books percentage has, has gone up too. We went from 57 to 71, as did award winners. So there's just a lot of different sort of insights you can glean from the work that we did today. And what we did was um, very quick and we, you know, we weren't thinking about a particular or a specific community when we were doing this work. We were just sort of doing it and, and seeing, um, seeing what worked. So if we go over here to this, this list that we've been working on, version three, and we click generate implementation plan, we see this screen. Um, so you can type in, and this, this name that uh, you write in here is the name that you want appearing on your certificate of completion, mm -hmm. um, which you know, is going to be signed by the state librarian. So I'm going to use Jacob because, you know, official. And I don't want this weeded version three here. So I'm just going to say, this is my thematic workshop crowdsourced list. And I want to include the list that we started with and the second iteration um, where we weeded in. Actually, yeah, I want to see where we started and then where we needed. So if I hit generate implementation plan, it'll pull up this really comprehensive report um, that has everything from your census data because we want to put your communities at the center of this. This is what it's about. To your list analysis report for the collection that you're looking at right now. And then comparison charts which show again, this time from left to right, um, the progress that you've made. So we went from 34 to 52 and 12 cultural experience areas to 17. Now here's what this essentially is a purchase list or an action plan. Um, here are the titles that we decided we wanted to add, these 18. And then here are the three that we're gonna weed. So you can just see looking at this, I mean, how, how different these three titles that we're weeding are from these 18 that we're adding. Mm -hmm. It's visible, it's, it's really clear. And then your flowchart, if you wanted to explain to somebody, what did you do when you, when you did the collection analysis initiative? What, what did the process look like for you? Um, and your certificate. So for anyone watching at home right now or, or at work, you could be watching at work, um, what I'm going to do is I will send you a link to access this list here. This is another great thing that teaching books allows. Um, we have universal sharing links, so you can share anything you do on teaching books pretty much with anyone who's not involved on teaching books with this share link. And if you click that, you can sign, you can share access with anyone, no sign in required. So what I'll do for all of you is I will email you, um, this link and show you how you can generate your implementation plan, get your certificate of completion for this collection, customize it with your own name. Um, that's This is the list that we've built together today. And I'll do the same thing if you, if anybody who's watching wants to email me, I can send you a customized certificate of uh, attendance for this session as proof of professional development as well. So that's where we're at with teaching books and reflecting um, and interpreting list analysis reports. Any questions um, before I sort of close out?
one question I have is um, like with your classroom library, if, if you are analyzing that, but kids currently have borrowed some items, should, like is it better to wait until you have the complete collection before you analyze it or? Um, I'd, I'd say that's up to you. I, I think, I, do you feel confident you'll ever have the complete collection is a, a separate question. That is true. <laughs> do you, I, I, I'm, I guess my hope would be that um, you might have access to the complete collection or like a record of what's been taken out so you can add that manually into okay. your spreadsheet. Okay, so that's an idea to add it manually. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, or you could even, you know, it, if you have a list of what's been taken out, even if they're just ISBNs, you can just copy and paste those ISBNs and put them in here. So you can you can upload your spreadsheet with this. Right. And then if you have your ISBNs for what's been taken out, you can say, you know, here's my list, here's my classroom library, and I'm gonna paste these in here Got it. and add them right in like that. Okay. So, yeah, there are, there are ways that you can get around that stuff if you have access to that information. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, anything else in general about what we did today? I do not have any. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to just sort of walk through the last few slides, but it was really fun building that list with you, and uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to send that out. That sounds good. So again, to recap, um, here's the process of what we went through today. We identified a collection. We didn't really assess our community needs because that wasn't a part of this demo, um, but we definitely gathered and organized our information. And then we went through this cyclical process here. Um, every time we did a new iteration, we reflected and we compared our results. So we got back to this cloud and we thought, you know, maybe I want to add in some, um, some titles, Muslim and cultural experience areas. I want to add in some humor. I want to add in some disability. This is what I feel like my collection needs right now. Mm -hmm. So we went through this cyclical process um, of adding and, um, and, and reflecting. And then we got to the end of the process and decided we're ready to complete. Uh, and that's where the DEI implementation plan came into play. And just written out really clearly again, here is our process. We uploaded our titles. We reviewed our list analysis report. We created custom reading lists. Then we added those custom reading lists to our list analysis report, reflected and compared. So that brings us to the end of this um, first session on reflecting and interpreting list analysis reports. We are having a ton of these thematic workshops throughout the fall. Um, really excited about the next three. We've got some more co-hosts. Uh, it'll be me and Aaron, as well as a few um, different implementation and training specialists from Teaching Books. So we've got more experts on their way to show you the best way to use these tools and to kind of pull out some more um, wonderful little insights and nuggets from Teaching Books. So on October 25th, we're going to be looking at featuring Indigenous titles. On November 15th, we'll be building diverse holiday displays. And November 29th is a spotlight on graphic novels. For each of those, um, they'll be recorded. There will be a, a certificate of completion. And we will also send out the list that we work on uh, and create together at the end of those sessions. And then in December, right before the semester ends, um, right before the year ends, we're going to do a little recap just to give people just, you know, just one more entry point into the work. If you have some time at the end of the semester to, to look at your collections, um, we really just want to make sure that this remains accessible to you indefinitely. And we also have office hours. Um, these are spaced out based on when the workshops are. So our first office hours this month is going to be the 18th, a week from today. We also have two in November and one in December. Um, but you can also feel free to reach out to me at any time. You can reach me at jake at teachingbooks.net at this new phone number. Um, at the time of recording this video, this hasn't up, been updated on the teaching books site yet, but we are in the process of changing over our new numbers to overdrive numbers. Um, so that's going to be updated on all the relevant pages. But here is uh, this 216 number, extension 1763 to reach me.
So that is, uh, that's where I'm going to end the recording. Thank you so much for attending today. And thanks to all who were um, listening and, and watching remotely. Uh, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions whatsoever. We are all here to support. Thanks. Thank you.